we'll come back to some more Dwarf Fortress. So, in preparation of our uh, hopefully imminent arrival of the Elven Merchant Caravan, uh, we have a Minotaur show up. So, I'm going to go ahead and pull everyone back into the fortress and show how to deal with a Minotaur. So, again, let's go ahead and close the window. So, go to Military Alerts Active Restrictor Room for Burrows. And as you can see, the Minotaur has shown up in a very convenient spot as one of the guard towers. It's pretty much right there. So this should get everyone to pretty much drop what they're doing and head for inside. Now, luckily, Minotaurs aren't all that fast. So on the unit screen, it is labeled as an uninvited guest. Um, zoom to the creature. Go ahead and follow it. So, after a few ticks, it's going to head for something. The one um, advantage about having it come in across the river is it might have a little bit of trouble crossing said river. And there we go, water coverings, wounds, continue to follow it. So it looks like the water flow is actually keeping it pinned um, effectively against the border of the map. So if this keeps up for too much longer, uh, said Minotaur is actually going to end up with a very high swimming skill. Not that that's going to help much. But let's see what's going on. Oh yes, the Snatcher. So, more fun shenanigans to have to deal with. Luckily, uh, said Snatcher already hit the cages, so it's safely dealt with. Go back to here, zoom to the creature, and follow it. So, if this actually continues for too much longer, I'm going to go ahead and cut the video and resume when something more important has happened. But until then, we can watch the Minotaur go swimming. So, this. Oh. It actually finally made it out, so I'm not going to end up cutting it. So that is one of the reasons why you want to have, um, hopefully, um, most of your dwarves have at least a little bit of swimming skill. There is sort of a way of doing that with a wave pool. Basically, you have a uh, something set up that will create a uh, wave that oscillates between two points. So a single tile of, uh, probably in a three-wide hallway, uh, two three-tall tiles, which dwarves can simply walk through, and a third four-tall tile, which dwarves will, would have to swim through. Uh, have it in a um, commonly traversed area, and dwarves would uh, slowly gain the swimming skill. It's not overly useful, and it's relatively rarely used. But uh, it's one of those sort of skills that if you have it, it's great. If you don't, it's not really a huge deal. Anyway, that's how you take care of a Minotaur, simple cage trap. So let's go ahead and go back to the military alerts and pull everyone off the burrows detail. Though it is not really late, late spring yet. 
the later part of late spring. Now, very interesting. Anyway, the uh, one thing that you can do is if you figure out approximately when the caravans end up showing up, just to have everyone safely inside in case of an ambush, uh, a few days before you estimate the caravan shows up, uh, order everyone into the, into the burrows. That way, if a car uh, if an ambush is following the caravan, or uh, even better, a siege, then everyone's either already inside or just about to be inside when everything shows up. Uh, at that point, realistically, the worst thing that can happen is the uh, the caravan ends up eating the ambush, or the other way around, and you end up with a free caravan full of stuff. Of course, the natural downside is that you're going to spend the next month or so trying to pick everything up. Uh, also, do keep in mind that with the exception of a dwarven... Actually, I'm not sure if the, uh, the dwarves will forgive you for that. But the if a caravan doesn't return home, uh, then your you as the fortress is held responsible uh, even if you didn't attack them. So let's say you've got a, an elven caravan come in, or a, actually a human caravan would be a lot better. A human caravan comes in, and an ambush follows them. They make it, uh, the caravan makes it inside your gates and trades. They're happy with the trading. You've concluded your business, and they go back outside. Uh, what can potentially happen is, as they're leaving, they end up walking through the uh, the ambush or siege or whatever that followed them. Uh, the caravan gets wiped out, and the human civilization that they came from uh, ends up knocking your reputation down a little bit, uh, even though you were not the ones who attacked them. So it is actually in your best interest to... Uh, do what you reasonably can to keep your uh, keep visiting caravans from getting killed off. The one possible exception to that is that if your home uh, sort of home nation home uh, uh, shit, I'm at a loss of words here. If the civilization that sent you to found the fortress sends a caravan, I do not believe that they would get mad at you if the caravan does not return. Uh, however, it is possible that if, uh, instead of sieging you, uh, they may simply not send a caravan for another year or two. Uh, this can be very, very costly, especially if, you, if you're relying on imports of goods for sort of day-to-day -day life. Although, once you've developed your fortress uh, quite a bit, it's less of an issue. As, by that point, most of the goods are self-produced. And we're getting sort of towards the end of late spring. I hope I haven't uh, done anything to the elves. I don't think I have. So they should be showing up here any time. I think usually it's around the 22nd or 23rd. Uh, also, one thing with uh, ordering everyone to the burrows, it does tend to cancel, or rather suspend, various construction projects outside, so you'll have to go back through and make sure that everything's been unsuspended properly. And that doesn't actually need one. Alright, so, as I'm expecting a caravan to be showing up here any time now, I'm going to go ahead and go to the military, the alerts, Order everyone to the burrow. 
and this will be a lot less necessary after I finished off these guard towers, uh, considering that I believe most of the caravans uh, start along this eastern side of the map. So the, car the caravan comes through uh, a day or so later, the ambush comes through, and they end up hitting the towers. Uh, something to keep in mind, unless your civilization is at war with another, uh, it is very unlikely, uh, if it is even at all possible, that a civilization will decide to randomly siege you. Uh, most ambushes and whatnot come, uh, basically they follow the caravan in, uh, seeking whatever they can get off of your fortress. So anyway, here we have the Nuart's Elven Caravan from uh, Ari Azul. Ah, uh, whatever, it's the Elven Caravan. So, uh, there are some pretty mixed feelings about the Elves. Uh, the uh, Until the uh, 2014 version of Thor Fortress, they were the game's biggest hypocrites. Uh, the kind of key thing about Elves was that while they will trade you wood, they will not accept any wooden items in return, uh, as well as a few others, but it's basically anything that is produced with or has wood as a component of the production chain uh, will basically be an, an insult to them. They will immediately pack up and leave. And uh, possibly gain you the ire of the Elven civilization. Uh, in the 2014 version, the Elves bring items that have a grown flag attached to them, uh, which is safely tradable. Think of it as instead of cutting down a tree to make a crossbow, they just sort of have a crossbow plant that they can. They plant the crossbow plant and it has crossbow fruit. So it's completely renewable, sort of thing. Uh, even though the trees are actually entirely renewable. So, uh, the Elven Caravan, it appears, is safely making it into the fortress via the shortcut. So they'll come down here, and it looks like we have a couple of spare people. So uh, first thing to do, sort of as soon as the caravan has shown up, is order the uh, go to the depot, or to order the trader to try to get his or her uh, butt to, the, to said depot. And conduct the business. Next is going to be to move the goods to or from the depot, although now that we have uh, nobility and whatnot, we need to check the mandates. Uh, so the count has a mandate of no helmets being exported. The mayor has a mandate of no anvils being exported. Not a problem. Uh, both be somewhat daft to export. Anyway, so, next we need to move the goods to the depot. So do a select, and the other major, major advantage of the, uh, having a lot of bins is being able to sort by the bins. So, do finished, and then that will sort all the finished good bins. Uh, elves do not mind if you bring items to the uh, trade depot in wooden bins, uh, as long as you don't accidentally try to trade them one of the wooden bins, you're fine. Then you're fine. So, wooden bins, and unfortunately that's not a select everything option. Uh, if you do accidentally trade away, say, a helmet, uh, then the dwarf who brought the helmet to the trade depot that ended up getting traded uh, will uh, get a punishment assigned to them. One of the key aspects of picking out your nobility and uh, mayor and whatnot is that even if the, uh, as long as the trade good is still on the map, it is valid for punishment to be handed out for it being traded. So once the a dwarf picks up a bin, or picks up a helmet, 
that helmet is traded, the merchants pack up and are on their way out, and a mandate comes in of no helmets um, being exported. Even though it's no longer your helmet, it still can be considered a violation of the mandate, and it's somewhat strange at that point. Uh, I'm sure at some point there will be a, um, a fix for that. But anyway, uh, considering that we are somewhat limited, let's just go ahead and do all the finished good bins and resume. So this will uh, get everyone to, basically anyone who isn't doing something else, will start hauling the bins to the trade depot. And this is going to take a couple of minutes. Uh, likewise, the merchants at this time should be unloading. There it is. The merchants have arrived there and are unloading their goods. Uh, that's going to take a couple of days. Uh, usually, the merchants will stick around for about a month and a half or so. Uh, the time really varies a little bit. But as soon as the first, first merchant comes in and starts unloading, uh, then a timer starts, so you have that amount of time to get your business uh, taken care of. There isn't a way to dismiss them early, so uh, I don't really see of why anyone would want to. Uh, it does give a lot of just extra trading opportunities. Now, of course, one thing that we could do is seal in the fortress and... Just kind of let the mer not let the merchants out. Uh, if that does happen, then they will go crazy and start attacking dwarves or whatever. Uh, the other somewhat popular option with elves is to have um, basically an unfortunate accident befall the traders, uh, be it pitfall trap, um, having their caravan flooded and drowning them. Uh, things like that, uh, simply ordering your your highly trained military squad in to kill them also works, uh, but a lot of people like to beat up on the elves. Personally, I don't. Uh, a lot of that is the amount of wood, cloth, uh, wood and cloth that they bring uh, really helps to jumpstart the various uh, industrial processes that I need to do, and it's an extra thing that I can, extra group that I can trade away the various junk to help keep the FPS up. So, uh, after an appropriate amount of time, it takes a little bit, uh, the broker should show up, you can go to trade, and as, as long as everyone's done getting set up, then you're good to go. So, on the, uh, on the left you have what the merchant currently has, on the right you have what, your, uh, what you've brought to the uh, trade depot, So again, um, elves. The uh, elves are the only uh, race that will trade with you that has some sort of a restriction on them on the goods that they'll accept. Uh, the other thing is you cannot sell. Uh, you cannot, let's say, ambush a a human caravan, turn around and assume that the humans aren't at war with you, uh, sell their goods back to them. That just doesn't work. So, uh, let's go down here and hopefully find something useful that they've got. Rope reed, fiber, these are probably ropes, wooden instruments, wooden toys. Uh, we're going to take this grizzly bear cage, it should be loads of fun that we can uh, do. Uh, elves do like to bring a lot of animals, and these animals are already trained so you don't have to worry about trying to train them up. Uh, wooden cages, I've got, I should have enough uh, trade value to be able to snag all these wooden cages, especially considering that they're only 10 apiece. As you do trading, the uh, whoever you have assigned to the trading will get uh, higher skill at it, so they will uh, end up being able to negotiate a better deal for you. So we have wooden barrels, wooden buckets, which we already have a ton of, uh, wooden armor and weapons, which are completely useless. 
this is why why would we want wood when we've got steel uh wooden chest why not bread feed fiber probably bag might as well grab these strawberry seeds Wooden chest is cheap. I'm just going to kind of go through and grab what I know I need, or at this point, what I just kind of sort of want. Uh, sand bags. It is actually possible to get some very, very nice deals out of these uh, trades. Uh, things like bags. You're buying not only the bag, but also what's in them. And often for a very good deal. However, these elves seem to not have anything of use. So I'm actually going to grab all this thread for what it's worth. Wooden greaves, wooden splints, which I don't need anything of. Wooden perches, which I don't need. I'll tell you what, I'm going to grab a couple of them. Why not? So, yeah, that's the uh, elven trading. Uh, most people, I think, don't like the elves because of the, of what they bring to trade or don't bring to trade. Uh, they never have anything metal, and even if it's a useless metal item, you can always melt it down for a little bit of something. So going over to mine, uh, the trader. Uh, there's two aspects of trading that you have to keep in mind. Uh, the trader loss. Traders will never accept a loss, and Realistically, you're going to want uh, the trade value to be in the trader's favor by 150% of, uh, of the trade value. The other thing to keep in mind, which is mostly an issue with um, the smaller caravans, uh, the wagons do have a weight limit, but it is much, much, much higher, uh, almost to the point where unless you decide to start trading away golden statues, you're not going to have a weight a weight issue. So come over to our side. Uh, you can uh, simply seize the mark goods. Elves are not going to stop you, but it does. It's not exactly good for build relations. So we're going to come over here. Uh, I, green glass, bone. I believe green glass, uh, bone, and leather are all val uh, valid um, trades, uh, things that the elves will accept. And here I have all of the finished goods that are kind of taking up space in the, uh, in the stockpiles, but this is what I'm after. The slightly worn and very worn cloth items, and already we're up a uh, thousand from a handful of items. I'm going to finish this trade, hopefully quickly. So these, here we go. And it is possible to simply trade away the entire bin. It saves the merchants packing up time. But the elves won't accept the wooden bins, so. And at this point, I'm willing to accept a rather significant loss uh, just to try and empty out some of the bins. So, changing to the uh, non buggy uh, font, we have trader profit of 5,300. 
and a value of 26 call it 2700 so they're definitely going to take this uh, you can simply give them this and say you have this on us um, it builds up good relations but nothing else so at this point let's go ahead and hit T to trade they seem ecstatic with the trading and we're finished with the business so that's the uh, how to do trading. Uh, at this point go ahead and tell the trader that they are no longer needed. So unrequest them and everyone goes back to doing what they were doing. So anyway that will conclude the sort of more tutorial side of the Dwarf Fortress series. And I will be starting the next one here probably soon-ish. Um, more with the uh, large fun projects. So until then, stay safe, and remember, don't trade wood to elves.